Okay, this video is for Astronomy 400, Summer 2020, Sac City. This is how to use Stellarium, okay? Stellarium is going to be a program that we're going to lean on heavily um, for a while. So, basically, the way you get Stellarium is you go to Stellarium.org, not .com, it's .org. Okay, how do I get there? How do you get there? Let's go to Google, put Stellarium in, S-T-E-L-L-A-R-I-U-M, and it's on the it's on the syllabus. The syllabus, you probably already have the syllabus. The, the link to, to this page is already there. Okay, and then you can download it. And again, they also have their own, you use your browser to look at this one. This one's different. I'm not used to this. I prefer the downloaded version for now until I look more at this. So I downloaded it. So you got all these options for downloading it and you probably know which option works for you uh, mine's was Windows this one here 64-bit Windows um, probably if you have a newer computer it's probably either gonna be the Macintosh or the I, I'm assuming the 64-bit Windows um, so those are the two ways you can download it so you go you just click on it and it's going to see I already downloaded it so I don't need to download it again so let me go cancel or maybe this is the one I need to cancel Oops. Well, anyway, hopefully it's not doing anything. So anyway, you just go through, follow the um, instructions, and, okay, do you want to allow this app to make, no. Okay, see, I already downloaded it, okay? So I don't need to download it again. All right, <clears throat> so, once you download it, you will get this, okay? I can't make it full screen because I can't, I don't have access to this. All right, so, if I go here to using Stellarium, Open Stellarium, so you just open it here. What, for me, where, Word, where Windows puts it is down here, under the S's, obviously. So there's Stellarium right there. Okay, and I just go down there, I click on that, and when I do that, it opens. Uh, it opens uh, this guy that we just looked at right there. Okay. Okay, so this is Stellarium. After the program opens, move the cursor to the left side of the screen and towards the bottom. A toolbar should appear along the left of your screen. Move the cursor over each of the items to see what they are. Okay, so let's go back over here. And if we go over here. Let me get out of... Try to find... Um, I'm trying to get rid of this. If I go deep into space and find a really open place, there it went away. Okay, now we can back out. Alright, so come over here and then you got the top one. That's the location window. Now, for some reason, it keeps wanting to put me in Nevada City. Uh, you come here, you click on that, and then you go down, and you'll find Sacramento. And sometimes you gotta, like, there's so many names on here. It's like everywhere in the whole, every place on Earth. Nevada City has its own. You can pick Nevada City. That's how many places it has. So I'm looking for Sacramento. And it'll probably revert back to Nevada City. If it keeps doing that, I'm just gonna leave it as Nevada City. Um, Okay, come on. If I go uh, S A C, we're getting closer. Oh, there's all these Santa, Santiago, uh, Saint, San. Boy, a lot of names S A N are the first three letters. Uh, San Francisco, so that go by. Oh, if I grab the cursor, it goes too far. I may just stick with. Okay, wait. We got it here now. We quit, we're up to S A P. So someplace here is. Some, well, not too many places start S A C. Now we don't want Sacramento, Brazil. I don't even know there was one. We want Sacramento. United States, that's us, okay. So, this is the one I want, and there it's got it down there. Okay, so Sacramento, and so we're good. Okay, so let me close this, and hopefully it stays Sacramento, it does, okay. That's the location window, and if it keeps going back to Nevada City, I'm just gonna say, okay, fine, I'm in Nevada City. This is date and time. Okay, so 2020, that's the year, the month, and the day that I'm doing this, okay. Then the time, now you gotta remember it's four o'clock right now, but they're using the 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 twenty-four hour clock. So twelve noon is twelve zero zero, but then one p.m. is actually thirteen zero zero, and so on. Uh, down here, I, I I show you this down here. I give you the whole table here. So this is what we're used to. This is what Stellarium is going to use for those times. It's a twenty-four hour clock, so that's the big difference. All right. So go back over here. We've got the. Oh, now I got to get rid of this again. 
Uh, see, the way to get rid of it is you'll wave out there, point someplace where there's nothing, but you have to go deep, deep in there to get it. And then you come back over here. Now, we, we don't have the other stuff there. So, date and time window, sky and viewing options I have not looked into ever. Okay, search window. Okay, this will be important because now we can search for things. So, I'll just search for Jupiter. J U P I T E R. Now, Jupiter is going to be below the surface of the Earth, so it's in that direction. We're looking at the ground. So what do I do then? I'll show you this later, but I'm going to turn off the Earth. There's the Earth. Get rid of it. There's Jupiter. Okay, so we found ourselves Jupiter. I need to get rid of this. So we can go deep into Jupiter, and there we see the Jupiter and its four moons. So you can see there's all sorts of potential for me to come up with labs using this. We can look at all sorts of deep sky objects and so on. Okay, let me get someplace where... Oh, actually, let's uh, go another, so we can look for anything. So, location window. So, let's look for Saturn. S-A-T. And Saturn's very close. Look at that. They're right next to each other in the sky. Okay. So, we can go in and look at Saturn real close. We can see it has a bunch of moons. We can see the ring system. Okay, so there's Saturn. And we can look for every object. I mean... And we can click on anything. Like, look at that guy there. It tells you all the information. Just some random star. Look at this little dot. I won't have information about that, will it? Oop, it does. Look at that. Uh, this guy, and here's a bigger star. Maybe it has, even has a, a name. No, it's just a, oh, it's a double star. See, and then, well, actually, let's get to that later. Let's move on. All right, so, why is it not giving me that thing? Okay, so, this is configuration window. Again, I don't see us using that. If we have to use it, I don't think we will. But, and then we have the astronomical calculations window. That's new. I don't even know what that is. Okay, then we got help window, so we need help. Okay, so let's go back over to our Word document. So, location window, that's useful. Date time window, that's useful. Uh, see, I even have uh, sky and viewing options window. We'll leave this alone since the uh, important options should already be set. So the, the default ones are good enough. The search window, this is what so we use these three location window, date time window, and search window. Now, if we move the cursor to the bottom of the screen, another one pops up. Okay, so here we've got the constellation lines. So you put those in, and it'll show you the lines that the, the people from a long, long, long time ago saw patterns in the stars. Okay, so for example, Okay, so you can see them all. We're really... Alright, so... If we put the other one, Constellation Labels, and I don't see any famous ones. Right? Scorpius. There's Scorpius, a scorpion. Okay, and then we'll go the... So there's Scorpius. That's pretty famous. And we can move around, I think. I've got it where I'm just turning... Okay, so let's go out and see if we can find. So you can see there's the constellation art. Um, if you're into astrology, which this is not an astrology class, but if you're into astrology, you can probably recognize some of these. Uh, Pegasus. Pegasus is fairly familiar. It's fairly, I don't see the Big Dipper. But anyway, anyway, we don't. We're not going to. I, I, if we use these, it'll be just maybe one lab at the end of it to do something. Now you got these two grid lines. I don't see us doing much with these grid lines. Let's turn them off. Okay, now here we're getting to the important ones. This is the Earth. Now we're looking at the Earth, so we got to do this because the area of the sky we are looking at, we would not be able to see it right now. Okay, this is cardinal points. This is something else we're not going to use. I don't envision us using it. This is atmosphere, okay? I've got the atmosphere turned off. If I turn it back on, oh no, blue skies. We can't see anything. So right now, sunlight is going and interacting with our atmosphere. Our atmosphere is redirecting the blue light to our eyes, so we can't see the stars. If we didn't have an atmosphere, if we were on the moon, we would see this. But because we have an atmosphere during the day, we can't see this. <coughs> so the atmosphere, we're most we're going to have that turned off, okay? Because I'm, it's right now as I'm doing this, it's 4:33, or what does that be? 16:24, 16:24. So obviously it's still daylight. All right. So 
we will mostly have that turned off and then we'll probably have the earth turned off too for a lot of things we want to look at okay this is these are deep sky objects okay so there it's showing up all these dis distant objects some of these are galaxies so they're not even part of the Milky Way so what do you think M48 is I have no idea it's an open star cluster so it should be a bunch of very blue star oh you know what I didn't center on it you go down here see this guy right here this guy will center on that boom so I can go in really close and then boom a bunch of blue stars okay very young blue stars and then you can pick out other things you see these little circles heart-shaped cluster uh, they're all a lot of them are clusters I don't see any galaxies I think we're in the wrong part of the sky to see a lot of galaxies. Uh, down here, you've got a bunch of stuff going on over here. In um, there's Betelgeuse. So if we go in here, uh, let me put the con see. This is where the constellations can help you. So constellation uh, lines. So okay, here is Orion. There's Rigel. Okay, right in here is where we want to go. So let me if I click on something there and center on it. We can go in here. We got all mess of stuff going on here. This is a place astronomers love to study. Right in there, a lot of star formation taking place in here. A lot of really cool stuff going on right in there. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so this was the deep sky objects, and then we're going to turn it off because we don't quite for right now. Here are the planet labels. So you click on that. We I think. See, it's already turned on. That's why when we looked at Jupiter and Saturn, they had their names next to it. If you don't have this turned on, it won't tell you that that's Saturn and Jupiter or Mercury or Venus or or or, Jup or um, Uranus or, or Neptune. So you got to have that turned on for the planet names to be listed. Switch between equatorial and... Okay, we're probably not going to use this one. This is what centers on something. So I click on this guy, and I want to center on him. I just click on that, and we are now centered on... It's a star, tells you the magnitude, and so on. Not very interesting, but see all the way out here. All these, you get far enough away, it looks like just a whole bunch of stars. Okay, so that will center you on the star you want to be centered on. This is for night mode. So in other words, you have your laptop, you take it up to the mountains, it's dark, and you don't want light from your computer screen, and you'd have this filling your screen. So you do that, it turns everything red, okay? Red does not make your retina close okay other colors light goes in your retina starts to close for some reason red won't so in other words you'll be able to look at the screen and then look at the sky otherwise if you look at the screen like this what happens is your your your, your iris is iris it starts to close the iris starts to yeah the iris not the retina the iris starts to close to let less light in right then you go look at the sky and oh you can't see anything you have to let your iris open up more to let more light in but if you put it on this mode here then your your your, your iris isn't going to close up as much so you can look at this say okay my my iris is still open now i can look up there and look at look at rigel look at beetlejuice beetlejuice over here look at beetlejuice okay okay that's what that is we're not going to use that here but in the future if you do go able to go up there and look at the stars and bring your laptop and have this program then you'll be able to do this just gives us full screen I'm, I'm avoiding full screen because last time I did it it locked up and I had to stop and start the video all over again not this video but the other one okay this is extra planets this is something we can mess with later you know if I, I'll put it on but you're not going to see it it's a new thing I started using Stellarium they didn't even know if other uh, I, maybe they did but anyway it wasn't part of it wasn't part of Stellarium, so we probably I'll have to look into this. Meteor showers, I think that's a new thing. So <coughs> it'll show you the meteor showers. Where are they? Uh, let's see if we turn it off, does anything go away? Well, I did turn it off. It's turned on. Now it's turned on. Did anything come and go? Ah, so this is another one I'll have to look into more. Uh, show search dialog box. I don't know what that is. Meteors. Oh, that's the search search for the meteors. Okay, this is stuff we'll have to look into later. Um, satellite hints. So apparently this gives you where to look in the sky if you want to see satellites. Okay, now another one. Okay, that was actually let's. Okay, so let's go over here. 
So we talked about constellation lines, we talked about constellation labels, constellation R, okay, so they place grids in the sky for the equatorial azimuthal uh, grid, uh, probably won't use that. Ground, if we Earth gets in the way, we remove the ground, Earth gets out of the way. You had to do that to see Jupiter and Saturn. Cardinal points will skip for probably forever, not just for now, but forever. Atmosphere tur moves the, turns the atmosphere on and off. Deep sky objects, we looked into that. Puts little circles on there that are the very far objects. Some of them are galaxies, some of them are globular clusters, some of them are open star clusters. There are a whole planetary nebula. There's a whole bunch of things. Planet labels. Okay, if we don't have that on, we'd be looking at a dot, not look, knowing that it was Jupiter. We'd have to go in close to see, oh, that's Jupiter. That's not another star. Okay, center on selected object. Again, we went over that. That's the one you click if you want what an object you want to have. You click on the object, then you center on the object. Okay, choose an object. Okay, so on night mode, we talked about that. Full screen mode and quit are what they say they are. Now we've got the um, way to control time, which is over here. Okay, so what I can do is I can increase time. So watch these numbers here. This is what it is right now. If I do that, look how that is going much faster. Okay, so time's going by faster. I can make it go by even faster by clicking it again. Now we can actually see the sky move. I can click even faster by doing that. Okay. Now, if I want to go back to normal, I just do that. And if I want to go back to right now, I just do that. This puts us back to normal time rate. See, everything I'm talking about over here, if you, I can't put the cursor in two different places. But see over here. Look over here when I, when I put the cursor on that. See, it says over there, set normal time rate. This is set time to now. This is increased time speed. This is decreased time speed. I think it actually reverses it. I think it makes you go backwards in time, doesn't it? Yeah, it makes you go backwards in time. It doesn't decrease, decrease time speed. Let me go back to normal and do that. Okay, so let me pick some place in the sky so we can get rid of that over there. All right, so the other thing we can do here, let's, let's go back to Jupiter. Let's find uh, Jupiter. Now, one thing that the browser bit one has that, that's a, a, it's an advantage over this one is that it lets you click on Jupiter. Here, you have to type Jupiter all the way in. It, it gives you what you could be looking for, but um, there you got to type the whole thing in. The browser one, I, the little I messed with it, it actually allowed you to put like a JU, then Jupiter would come up as one of the ones possible, and you just click on it. But we'll do that. Okay, well, we got to turn off the Earth again. So we go down here. There's the Earth. I have it on. So there's Jupiter, and we're centered on Jupiter. We can go in really, really close and look at Jupiter's moons. We're probably going to have to go out a little bit. So you've got Jupiter, you got Castillo, got Castillo, Ganymede, Europa, and Io. Those are the four Galilean moons, the ones you can see. Um, with a telescope, that's how Galileo discovered them. He first person to point the telescope in the sky. Now, if we go back over here, we want to be able to control better. Okay, so another important item to note, you can zoom in and zoom out on any object by page up and page down. I'm using the, 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 the wheel on the mouse to zoom in and zoom out. Okay, also the plus key, which basically is, is equals, but you just hit the equals key without the shift. You don't put the shift down. You're, you're, you're hitting the plus key to go forward in time, but you're really, it's, it, it's the equal with the plus, but you don't hit the shift key. That makes sense. You're, you're hitting the equals, equals key, but Stellarium sees that as the plus key. Okay, moves you ahead one day at a time, and the minus key moves you back one day at a time. All right, so if we go back over to Stellarium, so I go, go down here. So watch this time right here, okay? So let's go, I paused it. So see, now we're really in close. That's why it's moving across the screen. So I must not be centered on Jupiter anymore. Am I not centered on Jupiter? Apparently not. Okay, now I'm centered on Jupiter. Okay, so watch the date. T26 six, 6. So one of those sixes is going to turn to a 7 when I hit the. I'm hitting basically the equals key, okay, without the shift. There, look, we went to 7. I'll hit it again. We go to 8. We go to 9. We go to 10. So we're going forward 
a number of days, okay? We could see the rotation of the, the moons, okay, as we sit looking at Jupiter. Okay, I can put it back to right now. Okay, and then if we hit the minus key, we go back in time. So I'm just hitting the minus key so you can see the, the 6 6 right here. Look at this. Look at this. This is 2020 June 6th. Okay, that 6 will turn into a 5 here. So we went back a day. Now we'll go back another day. Now we'll go back another day and another day and another day and another day. And we'll go back to current time. All right, now if you do the control key and the plus key at the same time. In other words, control and the equal sign, okay? You're not hitting shift at all. Control key and the equal sign key, which Stellarium is taken as the plus key. At the same time, you move ahead an hour at a time, while the control key and the minus key in combination moves you back an hour at a time. So let's try that. Okay, so we're centered on Jupiter. There's the time. We're looking over here, 16, 34, 51. I'm hitting control. I'm hitting control plus. So watch the 16 just turned into a 17. Just turned into an 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So you can see, or we're going back over now. 24 was zero. And so basically we're looking at it from Earth. Okay? That's why Jupiter is moving all over the place. So, and you can see what's happening. You can see the moon slowly move around doing their big dance. We may have to go out a little bit. Okay, but we can see the, if I just hold the key down, what happened? oh, then it goes way too fast, never mind, we don't want to do that, and I probably lost Jupiter, I guess, I may not have been centered on Jupiter anymore, okay, so anyway, there's all the different ways to use Stellarium, okay, also Stellarium uses a 24-hour clock, not the 12-hour clock we're used to, so zero hours is, is 12 a.m. midnight, then these all match up, okay? But then when you get over here, this is where you got to do a little mental gymnastics. We go from 12 p.m., from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m., that's okay, we got 11 to 12. But then we go to 1 p.m., that goes to 13. So what you need to do is whatever number Stellarium is giving you, you need to subtract 2 from it and then remove the 1. So 19 minus 2, actually, I guess you subtract 12 from it. So you get a 7. 20 minus 12 would give you the 8, 21 minus 12 would give you the 9, 23 minus 12 would give you the 11. Okay, so there you go, this is Stellarium. So my next plan is to finish off your uh, lab that I'm going to try to give you Monday, and it'll be due a week from Monday, and then I need to also work for my, look, look into my astronomy lecture that starts on Tuesday. Alright, so hopefully these two will be up soon, I'm, I'm going to upload them tonight, I'm going to send an email out tomorrow to everybody in the class I can figure out how to get a hold of and then uh, I say good night good afternoon whatever it is where you are as you're watching this right now and good night